All right, so um, on the screen here, we've got the development of the and positioning of the muscles in the back of the leg when you're an embryo. So you can see at A here, we've got our popliteus muscle. We've got the original vestigial artery that runs deep to popliteus. And believe it or not, both heads of gastrocnemius originate on the lateral aspect of the knee, okay? Now, over time, what happens is the medial head of gastrocnemius starts to migrate from the lateral aspect across to the medial aspect. Now, at the same time, the original primitive artery disappears from deep to popliteus and then re-establishes superficial to popliteus. Hopefully, by that time, the medial head of gastrocnemius has migrated across to its final resting position off the back of the medial condyle, and you've got your definitive popliteal artery sitting nicely between both the medial and lateral heads of gastroc. Now, unfortunately, sometimes that doesn't go according to plan. So there are two subtypes of popliteal artery entrapment syndrome. There's the type that's been uh, termed anatomical. Now it's called anatomical because there are fairly extremes, extreme versions of anatomy that lead to these types. And there, there are six that are described in the literature. So you can see here in type one, what has happened is the medial head of gastroc has migrated across, but unfortunately it caught the popliteal artery and dragged it right across to the side of the knee. In type two, it's similar, but there's this fibrous band that has uh, surrounded the popliteal artery and it, in effect is almost strangling it. In type three, the artery has developed in the middle of the medial head of gastroc. So once again, it's sort of like constricting and tightening it. And in type four, the original primitive popliteal artery never disappeared and it stayed running deep to popliteus. So these are examples of anatomical popliteal artery entrapment syndrome. They cause a much more severe type of compression and occlusion of the popliteal artery. Now, if these types are identified, we don't muck around. We send them straight to the vascular surgeon. And really, the surgeon loves these sorts of patients because it's usually uh, a bit of a cut, a bit of a switch around, and the patient's cured. So the patient's happy and the surgeon's happy. The other issue with not treating anatomical PAES is that patients will develop early onset damage to their popliteal artery. So in their 20s and 30s, they'll be looking at bypass graft if it's not um, sorted and treated. Now, the far more common subtype of popliteal artery entrapment syndrome is functional. 